you grind it up for us though? Hmm? You wanna grind it up for us on the top? Oh, no. Oh, oh. Come on in. Come on and join the holidays tonight. All right, unmarry, married couples. We're back, we're back, we're back. One more night. Go ahead and share. Go ahead and start a watch party. You're excited about being here tonight. Yep. What's going on, Kevin Moore? We'll give folk a few more moments to get logged on. Looking forward to tonight's topic, this opportunity. To... Hello, Lydia. What's going on, Lydia? Thanks for checking in tonight. We're excited about tonight's topic. A little bit of a deviation from our normal uh, conversation, right? Yeah. Well, we know our married couples can benefit or have some input in tonight if they desire to. I think this is going to be good for both Mary and. Yeah. Hey, uh, Kiara. Good evening from the cruise. Bless y'all. Here, here come Kevin Moore. Yeah. <laughs> We're going blind tonight. Don't go blind, brother. Uh. But we want to encourage y'all again to like and to share and to start a watch party or comment. Uh, we're going to get started here in a few moments. and uh, But we're excited again tonight. This is Marriage Mondays with Marriage the Holidays. Mondays. And, and uh, we're live from our own studios yeah, right we here. Are. Bringing it to you all. <laughs> uh, ready to be a blessing tonight. Hopefully you all have had a phenomenal week since we've seen you last. And uh, again, we're excited about tonight's topic, which is unmarried, but not unimportant unmarried but not unimportant i think this is really going to be a significant opportunity yeah. uh, for individuals yeah. that you know who may be dating uh individuals who may be engaged and even for those that are married because a lot of times people got married and they never got single first never got single first babe. yeah so we're going to talk about that tonight and how important it is and hopefully give uh, as we like to do some practical tips yeah and uh, some sage advice Hi, what's Iru. going on kiara and the cruise crew love you love you love you love you love you go ahead and give us some love tonight show yeah. us some hearts give us some thumbs up thank you for sharing thank yeah you for sharing this to your page thank you yeah. for tagging others shout out to those on ig good to see yeah. you christina uh, let's Blessings, make Chris. make some noise tonight let some others know that we are on ig live yeah. we're also on facebook and uh again welcome welcome to marriage mondays with the holidays yeah yeah isn't my husband handsome just all this chocolate she, she all she getting started already <laughs> she gonna make it hard and difficult for us to get through can't this time. Help it. Can't help it. But we, we are indeed so in love you know and let, let me say this before we get started Come you know on, tell some me. people want to try to make you apologize for being in love and if god has blessed you and given you someone to be in love with Man, love them and love them well. Yeah, yeah. Forget what people say. Yeah, you life know? is too short, honey. Uh, yeah, and I, I, we celebrate one another. That's it. You, you be, know, we, we ain't got time it. for those who are in judgment yeah. or um, their perspective on things. Absolutely. And, you know, God is real. He, he's real. And if God give you real love yep. then enjoy the real love it, it's so true you know some, some people want to look at your relationship and call it fake or call you fake but you know man when it's genuine when it's true you don't have to worry about trying to prove anything to anybody just want to say that to the couples you know love on one another go public with your marriage yeah uh, but we didn't come to talk about no marriage tonight no, right yeah no we didn't we didn't but no. you know thank god for all the married couples that who are um, joining us on tonight. We welcome you. We yep. welcome the replay um, guests on tonight, As friends well. and family. Yeah. We celebrate you. We celebrate every last one of you. 
We know if you're not, if you're unmarried, God has some great things in store for you. Hold on, so true. hold on. That's so true. Our Instagram live audience, thank you all again for joining us. Thank tonight. you, Nicole. You're my daughter, Nicole. You're hey, let love somebody you. let somebody <laughs> else know that we're on the holidays are on. We're sharing. Hey, Ray um, Ray. For those that are unmarried tonight. I'm just all in y'all. I mean, all yeah, out there tonight. Yeah, so much love, but we thank God for uh Mary Ann. Thank you for joining us, Rachel. We appreciate uh, Nicole. It. Your chance and car, man. Love you. Uh, but we're gonna dive in tonight. We're talking about uh, uh being unmarried but not unimportant. And, yeah. and you all know if you've been watching us for a little while, you know, this is uh, we're the holidays. I'm Reggie. This is yeah. my gorgeous wife, Linda, for Thank 31 you, honey. years, Just my high sweetest. school sweetheart. You know, I, I could go on and on and on. But God has graced us and given us a call to help. Uh, strengthen marriages, yeah. help repair and restore marriages. Hey, Marcia. But, hey, well, yeah, what's going on, Marcia? To love help you, love you. Individuals grow in here. Yeah. And uh, we've been getting some feedback from those individuals who are not yet married, you know, uh, guys who are waiting on their Rachel and ladies who are wearing, waiting on their Boaz, as some mm. people like to say, or, or whoever it is that you're looking for. Uh, we're just excited, you know, to be able to talk about yeah. this tonight. Hello. Uh, Miss Peggy, Peggy, thank you for being faithful. Again, tag some friends, some family members, people that you know. Uh, we want to be a blessing tonight as we talk we about really being do. unmarried really but not unimportant. Yeah. That's our teaching topic. And we got some scriptures we want to get into Yeah, as you are sharing and commenting and giving us a bunch of loves and likes uh, this evening and sharing with us also. Uh, do a watch party. <laughs> you know, help us get the word out. What's up? Uh, Kibik, man, good to see you. Kevin Moore, he, there he goes again. He, he, look, he is the love well comedian. I know that's right. We appreciate you, Kevin. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. But we've got some scriptures. If you got a Bible, turn to Genesis chapter two. My wife is going to read verse uh, seven and a couple of other verses as we dive into this topic again. We're talking about being unmarried, but not unimportant. And this is important. I think this is vital uh -huh. for those who are married as well. Right. You know, because some people get, get married and they get married under the, you know, the misnomer or they have this faulty understanding mm -hmm. that if I'm 50 percent and my spouse is 50 percent together, we will make a whole but that's not how you want to do it. You mm -hmm. want both of you to be 100, 100. The kids say 100. We want, <laughs> we, you want to be 100 and 100 and bring each other together, two complete individuals, right. you know, making this marriage that, 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 uh, that can go the distance. And so, it's never too late. Even if you get married and you didn't get married the right way, it's never too late. You can start to work on yourself, just mm -hmm. like you're doing tonight, you're here online. And you can get all these tools yeah. and apply them. Learn Absolutely. how to use the tools. Absolutely. You know, we we have tools, but we don't know how to use them. Yeah, you need skills. You need yeah. skills. Shout out to the Millses. Again, this this is primarily for the unmarried. But I, I hey, believe yeah. if you're married, you need to you need to hear this message tonight, this teaching. And there's going to be some things that you're going to look at yourself and you'll say, hey, this is something that I need to work on to improve myself yes. so I can make a better contribution right. to my marriage. That's right. Let's go to the word. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. The Lord gave God planted a garden eastward in Eden, mm -hmm. and there he put the man whom he had formed. Mm -hmm. Let's drop down to verse 15 of um, Genesis 2. Yeah. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden. Thank God for loving the women so much that he made the man first. Um, yeah. And gave the man a job after he made him. Yeah, yeah. So y'all singles, y'all hear that? That's it. Make sure, make sure that man have a job, a good job, a job where he, that he can take care of you. I know that's right. And you right. don't have to work outside of the home no, unless right. you all just choose to do it that way. Yeah, if something happened, that's it. you know, it's no struggle in the household. Exactly. So then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And mm -hmm. the Lord God commanded the man. He commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. Come on. Yeah, yeah. So, so men, look, you ought to expect to have a revelation 
from the Lord in terms of what it is, who you are and what it is you're supposed to do. And ladies, you look for a man who has that's a revelation, right. who has a vision that's large enough to, to be able to encompass or handle what it is that God has uh, birthed and ordained for you to do. You don't want to have a man that's insecure or a man that has no clue where he's going, right. no, no sense of direction and purpose and destiny. You want a man that has a clear uh, view for the future. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because if you don't have a clear vision and you have a vision and yep. you're in the face of God mm -hmm. as a single woman, you know, there may, may be some friction in the household, maybe some jealousy in the household. That's and it. so we that that's number one. Yeah. You, you want a man that's in the face of God. That's true. That's Great a, evening. Look, that, so, that's, yeah. that's not in our notes, but that's a good one. You, you do. You want a man, those ladies who are looking for a man, find out. What's his prayer life like? I mean, does he spend time every day in the face of God? I mean, do, does he know God and does God know him? Right. Uh, do Does he have a relationship with the Lord? Make sure he's not religious. You know, just because you go to church, that does not mean you have a relationship with the Father. And that's the truth. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. Mm -hmm. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Mm. Surely die. Surely die. Yeah. Okay. And not only, you know, honey, um, he may be in the face of, he need to be in the face of God. Mm -hmm. um, even if you're married and he's not there, women, coach him up. Coach him up because we're in a war. We're in a battle. Yeah, yeah. And you need a man who can go to God <laughs> for it. the family, for the household. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. So let's jump right in, uh, right. dear. Uh, our teaching topic again tonight is unmarried, but n not unimportant. Exactly. We really want to encourage those tonight who are unmarried or single by helping them, helping you to see and to realize that your value to God is to God in the Lord mm -hmm. and is not predicated upon your marital state. Now, How now, 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 let's not go past that. <laughs> I think that's important because some folk, and even church, and this is the reason why oh we want to talk about this, yes. because sometimes us in the church, I've been, I've been pastoring 21 years. My wife has been walking alongside of me, helping in ministry, sharing, you know, in the ups and downs of victories and the challenges mm -hmm. of ministry. Uh, but, you know, sometimes we in the church can make those persons who are not married feel like, that they don't matter. Right. And, and it's really because of their marital state. And we want you to know that your value in, in terms of how the Lord sees you has nothing to do with your marital state. That is so true. Yeah. Being a fulfilled individual, no matter your marital state, requires you to be one who is complete first in Jesus Christ, yeah. as you will see in Colossians. Two and ten. Yeah, yeah. And Bible says that we're complete in him. Yeah. You know, and, and so as a married individual, I mean, you get your identity, your your worth, and your value, your significance. You get that from the Lord. And he says that you are complete in him. In him. So let, let's talk about what that complete looks like, what that means. Okay, complete means to be completely filled, mm -hmm. with one of the implications being that is one who is be um totally controlled by that which fills them so jesus yeah. christ you're complete in him mm -hmm. he's filling you or yeah, has absolutely. filled you so you don't need anything else to fill you up mm -hmm. you don't need mm -hmm. anybody mm -hmm. else to make you happy christ is the one that gives you that joy amen amen and so this also means that you are not expecting or requiring another to fulfill you or complete you. Women, men of God, you're just not finding someone to complete mm -hmm, you. Mm -hmm. You're whole before you go into the relationship. That's it. You bring a completed person Amen. into any relationship or stand as complete on your own. And I mean, that, and that's so powerful. So, so ladies, you know, don't don't give in to that old uh, fable mindset that you got to have a man to complete you. Right. And, and guys, you know, don't don't you feel like you got to have this woman that's gonna make you be the man you're yeah. supposed to be? Yeah. No, you 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 are complete in Christ. That's one of the benefits. You know, there are benefits that go along with the package of salvation, and one of them is that you are complete in Jesus Christ yes. and you don't have to have this, this kind of relationship to make you complete. As my wife said, you are complete on your own. 
And, and so specifically, unmarried Christians need, there's some things that unmarried Christians need to know. And before we go there, honey, you know what? I'm just, I'm just thinking that um, Satan, you, and if you don't already know this as single, Satan is mm -hmm. after you. And not just you, out the married couples, you out the all that believe and are standing firm for the Lord. Yeah. And so um, he especially wants you if you are um, unwanted in your singleness, meaning you are not satisfied mm -hmm. being single. Mm -hmm. You're not satisfied being by yourself. Um, it goes back into, you know, you're filled, you're, you're fulfilled in Christ. Right. And so when you're fulfilled and filled in Christ, you don't need anybody on your arm mm -hmm. to take you out. You go take yourself out, get dressed up, yeah. be satisfied Love on yourself. and remember that marriage is not a plan B. Yeah. And so sometimes we can jump right in. We want to get married or people can make you feel like you need to get mm -hmm, married. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a plan B. It's not a plan B for you to have sex. It's not a plan B for someone to make you happy. Yep. It's not a plan B for someone to take you out and take you on trips. Take yourself on trips while you're waiting mm -hmm. on that man mm -hmm. or that woman that God has sent it to you. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to get into some of those practical things a little bit more. But that, that I mean, those things are so important. And, you know, some, some people, you know, have been rejected. Some people have been abandoned. Some people have, have been made to feel unwanted. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times... This can happen with women, you know, the way that they see themselves, right. you know, and, and and especially if they've been in abusive, you know, relationships and those kinds of things. Sometimes it can happen in the home, you know, with your parents. Uh, but but there's some specific things that we want to encourage every unmarried Christian to know. And one of them is uh, that you have an, an important and a unique place in the kingdom yes. of God. Man, listen. A man, woman, you have an important place, a unique place in the kingdom of God. A lot of times, you know, y'all looking at married folks right. and thinking, oh, man, if I can just get married, I'm going to be like them. I'll be like the holidays or whatever. But you really don't know, you know, whether or not, and we talked about this a little bit for us, it's genuine. I mean, it's honest. We're working it. We're doing it. We're making it do what it do. But, you know, there are some folk, they do have a facade. There are some folk, you know, they are... Uh, uh, going through the motions and that kind of thing. So you, you know, sometimes single folk, you look at that marriage and say, if I can just get married, I'll be like that. Right. Not realizing that the married folk are saying, man, if I could just be in your shoes, mm -hmm. if I could be, but you have a, an important and a unique place in the kingdom. And, and not only that, God, he not only wants you saved, but God wants you to be fulfilled and he wants you to thrive. When Jesus says in John 10 and 10 that I have come that they might have life and that more abundantly, he came to teach us how to live. Right. And Jesus was a single man and Jesus was fulfilled. He was important. He was unique. He Listen, he knew that his father wanted him to be fulfilled and his father wanted him to thrive. And so that's an encouragement we want to make to those that are unmarried tonight. And then, then thirdly, every born again single is to live a fulfilled life. Uh, as Linda was saying a few moments ago, stop making excuses. Uh, you can go to dinner by yourself. You can take trips by yourself. There's a lot of things that you can do, you know, uh, with, uh, not having a spouse on yeah, your side. Yeah. You can live a fulfilled life. And we believe that it's sinful. If you are a uh, a person that's born again and you're not living a fulfilled life and you got Jesus, come on. You ought to live a fulfilled life, a joyous life. Uh, I, I believe that any uh, saved and unmarried person that is discontented in the single state, in the unmarried state, uh, uh, which God may presently have you, does not yet have a complete handle or understanding mm -hmm. on God's kingdom view of singleness. Right. And that's what we want to try to give you tonight. We want to help you uh, to, to see how important it is for you to live this out and to be fulfilled while you are unmarried. Yeah. And if you never get married, you know, you might want to get married, but what if you don't get married? Right. You, you're going to put everything on hold in right. your life until right. you get married. And so those that are unmarried must, among other things, correct, change, and improve how you see yourself. And that's important. That's so mm -hmm. important. Put the ice cream down. Put yep. those cookies down. And go enjoy 
who you are, who right. God created yeah, you yeah, yeah. to be, you that, know? That, that's that's so important. I mean, I, I encourage everyone that's watching tonight that's unmarried. Yeah, that's right, Veronica. Date you, you can date yourself, yeah. Tanya. You can love on yourself. You can buy yourself some flowers. Right, right. You can buy yourself some jewelry, whatever the case may be. But, but you invest in yourself. Know that you're complete. Know that you're fulfilled, you know, because that's what the Lord wants for you. You can thrive. Mm -hmm. And then when somebody does come that meets your criteria, look, they, they got to really have it all together because you're going to have yourself all together. That's right. And, and, and what's the, the, the old saying is, I can do bad all by myself. <laughs> You don't want to do bad with somebody else. So you you work on that. You, you know, know, realize these things, get these things internalized and into your heart. Now, marriage is a higher calling, but it's a, it's a good one. It is. It's a great one. It is. And you gotta, you've got to ready yourself for marriage. And I think that's why it's so important. If you are needy and you see yourself as a needy individual, you know, and you get into a marriage, you're going to be disappointed. You're probably going to get your heart broken. It's probably happened in some relationship. But when you see yourself properly, and we're going to, we want to talk about that. If you are unmarried, there are some ways that you need to see yourself. Right, right. Yeah, so how should they see that? Okay, you should see yourself as normal. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with you. Back so, up and say that again. You should see yourself as being normal. Right. There is nothing wrong with you. Don't let the church make you feel like it. Don't let you, that you're not normal. The don't world don't let society. your your parents yep. because they want grandkids. Ah. You know. Um. You know. You you may feel okay being single. Yeah. And you have to let them know that, you know, because everybody doesn't want to get married. Yeah. And so you are so normal. Right. right. <laughs> Not being married. It, that's true. And so nothing is wrong with you if you are unmarried. That's true. You are not less than, you know, you're not less valuable. You are not less important, unimportant because you do not yet have a spouse. That's and you right. have to tell yourself that daily. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, also, God created you for such a time as this. Amen. Your life is the proof. You're still here that you have value, you have worth, you have significance in the eyesight of God mm -hmm. who created you and made you. And so as you're waiting, as you're waiting to be married, mm -hmm. you know, you don't just settle because you know who you are in Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Look at yourself through the eyes of Christ. Look at yourself through the eyes of God, mm -hmm. how and what, you know, how God made you, you know, and who we are, who he are, who you are in him and what you possess. Yeah. You know, take the time to do that. And when you begin to do that, you realize that, okay, even um, what I'm looking for may change, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and you, you questioning yourself, you know, some, some people are questioning themselves, like, oh, it's so, it's not enough men, or I don't, I don't see um, men, or they're not coming to me and all that. It may be because your standards are high and you're not going to move your standards just to receive anything or anybody. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, you know, like you're saying too, you, you see yourself through the lens of the one who made you, the one who created you. I think that's important. And then you, 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 you just said a few moments ago too, the individuals need to not, don't see yourself uh, uh, based on what you are not. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All of us have, you know, some opportunities for growth and improvement and that kind of thing. And don't see, don't place your value on yourself in terms of what you possess and what you don't possess. Right, I mean, right. I mean, really understand that. Begin to look at what you do have. Be, begin to look at what does work, what mm -hmm. is right with you. Don't discount yourself at, by, especially by comparing yourself to other people. Right. You follow what I'm saying? I mean, Concentrate on what your strengths are. Yeah. Stand in the mirror and tell yourself how good you look and so forth and so on. And, and forget all of that negative talk because the devil will try to make you feel like you're unwanted, mm -hmm. that, that nobody wants you, that you're going to get you too old or whatever the case, time is passing you by. You know how that works. But you've got to focus on the things that you do have. As men and as women. As men and as women. Now, I want to read a scripture from First. Corinthians chapter 7, verse 32 through 35, 
because we want to take a moment and just talk to you about in your singleness a, a few things that you actually possess that the word of God mentions. And I think it's important That's because good. we know the word of God won't return to him void. Right. So, so if you don't have a list of things that you know that even in your singleness you possess, we want to help you to, to see those. So okay. in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and in verse 32, it says, but I would, and this is Paul writing, but I would have you, uh, he says, without carefulness or without concern. And notice what he says. He that is unmarried, Mm -hmm. Care it for the things that belong to the Lord yeah. and how he may please the Lord. Yeah. We're going to get into that. But he that is married careth, careth for the things that are of uh, the, careth not rather for the things that are of the world or for the things of the world, how he may please his wife. Yeah. So so when you get married, man, stuff changes, yeah. right? Your, yeah. your priorities, it's not. Very much so. Look, single people, when you eat, you take the whole household right. in. Right. Right. You, take well, advantage of that right now. Absolutely. I mean, and, and that's a few other things I want to get ahead of myself. <laughs> but he says that the difference is also between a wife and, and a, and a virgin or unmarried woman, the unmarried woman cares for the things of the Lord that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married cared for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. And this I speak for your own profit, not that I might I might not I might cast a, a snare upon you, mm -hmm. but for that which is comely that you may attend upon the Lord without distraction. Yeah, so, yeah. so real quickly, there are four things that, that singles and unmarried uh, persons possess. First of all is freedom. Yes. Right? There's freedom. Many of you know you've got friends that are married. They, they, they can't make certain moves without talking to their spouse, and rightfully so. Yes. Uh, and um, they can't make certain decisions. They just can't jump up and go and, and do and what have you. When you are unmarried, you have that freedom right. and, and and the bible even points out and lifts up that you you can go on a fast without checking with your spouse I mean, you can come home and just lay in the middle of the floor and have a time of worship you don't have to worry about your your spouse or food or those kinds of things and then you have an opportunity so but if you see where you are as a place of lack if you see your see where you are Oh man, time is passing me by. I'm never gonna get married. If that's how you see yourself, yes. you're gonna miss the opportunity that you have right now right. to do things unencumbered. You're not trying to figure out how you're gonna please your wife, how you're gonna please your husband. You have opportunity. You also have time, especially for the Lord. Yes. That's what Paul says with, with less distraction. Right. You know, my wife can tell you, I, I wanna be up under her as much as I can get, touching on her, loving on her, all that kind of stuff. Yes, Look at did. it right now. And, and I mean, but there's, there's some times where we know we have to pull away from one another right. so we can have time in, in intimacy with the Lord. And then the last thing is their flexibilities. If you are unmarried, you have flexibility within limits, right? You, you are a little bit more flexible. And I want to say this in defense of unmarried people in the church. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes in the church, we can treat you all like since you're not married, right. you don't have anything to do. Like you don't have a life and you don't have a schedule. And you since you might not have kids at home or a husband and all, yeah. that's a bunch of baloney. Yeah, no. We apologize for every person mm -hmm. that treated you guys yeah. like that. Yeah, Even any, us, if any, we did it. Any single unmarried person, we apologize to you because we know that you have things that you need to get done. And yeah. rightfully so. Yeah, and I mean, people trying to plan how you going to spend your weekend, and they figure they can drop their kids off at your house and mm -hmm. all these kinds of things. No, 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 no. If, if, if you are single, you should be taking advantage of the time that you have, right. uh, seizing every opportunity that avails itself that's going to move you forward yeah. in what God has ordained for your life to be. Yeah. And so we want to encourage you, yes. take advantage of this time. Take advantage of this time. Start to prepare yourself as men and as women. As far as your faith, go ahead and build yourself up. Um, 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 greater your relationship in the Lord, yeah. you know, so you can be strong for that spouse. And also your finances. This is time to get that credit straight. Yes. Work on work on you. Right. Also fitness. 
it, uh, it, this is a time to get that body right. So yeah. when when he does come, when she does come, you know, you're not exhausted, mm -hmm. you know, because you're going to spend that time trying you're to gonna satisfy need some stamina. one another. And so you want to be able to, you know, hang in there, you know, when that time is coming. So get that. And then you won't have to worry about turning the lights off because you, you're ashamed of your body. Yep. Go ahead and get your fitness. Go ahead and get your health straight so you can live a, a life uh, together, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. and one not worried about if he's sick and all that. Yep. Prepare yourself. And prepare yourself for your future, That's you true. know, where you're going, That's where true. you're headed, mm -hmm. you know, it's not for him to do it, it's not for her to do it, we're working on being whole, and, right? And, yeah, and, and really, you know, as you, I mean, you said it, faith, finances, your fitness, uh, and, and your future, I mean, that those are things that you all you ought to bring to the table when you're dating, mm -hmm. and talk about those things, where's this person staying as far as their faith? What what are, what are their thoughts about money? Do they have a whole lot of debt? Maybe right. we need to pump the brakes and you go go get your credit straight. Yeah. Because I got my yeah. my eight fifty credit yeah. score. You you go get yours straight, That's and then right. we can come back and try to talk That's about right. this thing. That's and right. then fitness. You you want a fit spouse. Yeah. You know, you do. men want a good looking woman, right? And that varies. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Yes. But he still wants an attractive Very spouse. Very attractive. I mean, he wants her to look good. Yeah, and you yeah. and you want him to look at you and say, "My God, yeah, wow, amazing, <laughs> phenomenal." I mean, you want all of that, and it and for it to be legitimate. And women, go ahead and listen to the women. Go ahead and get your sexy on right now. That's that's loving on you. Go ahead and buy those sexy lingerie, and you you know, just because you're single, you don't have to wear auntie clothes. You don't have to wear auntie underwear. Talk, talk, Can we talk, be real? Talk. You know, walk around the house and you enjoy your sexy and your um unseen, unmarried state. That's it. Go ahead and do that. So when he come here, you don't have to say, baby, go get some of that get stuff. Get some nice fragrant lotion and all those count. Girl, you talking right. what? Right. I'm going to have to get you off from over this talk tonight. <laughs> okay. You also want to be prepared in your education. Um, also in occupational things, yep, you know, you yep. want to be prepared in that. You want to be able to have some conversation. Don't, you know, whatever you like, whatever you like. No, you <laughs> want to be able to conversate with that person that you're dating. He's looking for something. She's looking for something. So, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of your relationship and your relational skills, Go ahead and build on that. Go ahead and take some classes. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're preparing ourselves right, right. for one another. We we expect that out of somebody else. So, mm -hmm. you know, that person is going to expect that out of you also. You yeah, have anything yeah. to add I, to I that? Do. Thing? You know, because a lot of times, you know, you don't, you've got to realize you're talking about getting married to somebody. You need to work on your relational yes. skills. You need to develop in terms of relationship. Especially if you've been unmarried for a while, yeah. you know, you go home and you may have a conversation with your pet or whoever it is or your girlfriends and what have you. But you need to know how relationships yeah. work, the give and takes of, of relationships. And things are changing, honey, mm -hmm. just like, um, what is it, Helena? Helene, yeah. Helene. You know, um, and when you're starting all over again, mm -hmm. and this dating thing is different, and, and you have to remember, we're not dating just to be dating, no, honey. No. And so we're not jumping into relationships just to find someone. We date to be married. And so, ladies, you're not saying, you're not dating for 10 years, and, you know, if he marry you by one, mm -hmm. two years, you mm -hmm. know, you're not the one. Put him on a clock. You're not the one. And so don't waste your time, men. Don't waste your time, women, on that person because time is very important. Um, so we we want to make sure that we're investing yeah. in the right thing. You're an investment. Absolutely. And, and Amanda points out, you know, conversation. We I made the joke, you know, conversation with the pet. But you need to know how to carry on a conversation. Right. And 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 and, and to listen, you know, and to practice, you know, active li listening. There's some communication skills that you need to bring to the relationship. You you talked about preparing yourself educationally, preparing yourself from an occupational standpoint. You know, make yourself quality marriage oh material. Most of the time, and, and we said this before, people tend to marry 
at the level at of the their level, dysfunction. At the level of it. Most man. of us marry at the level of our dysfunction. Right. And so what you want to do is to make yourself the best self that you can be. So that when that other person comes along, you know you worked out as many kinks and bugs and and all those kind. Of, look, yeah. there's not gonna be any recalls on you, <laughs> right? Because you worked on worked on yourself and yeah. you worked on. And when you all come together, that thing is gonna be magic. But there's still some work that will need to take place. Yeah. But if you don't have the skills and the ability to do so, the capacity, you all are gonna struggle. Yeah. I mean, think about it. To be a doctor, you got to have years of school. All these occupations, you got to have years of school. There's testing, there's board certification. But to be married, all you need is a few dollars. Go downtown, just at the piece, bam, you're in that thing. Where's your training? And then we're going to practice on one another. Right. And we don't have time to be practicing on mm -hmm. one another. Mm -hmm. We got to we gotta know what we're doing when we go jump into this marriage thing because this is a covenant. That's and true. we're supposed to be doing it unto the Lord. Right. And so we just jumping into it and yep. we don't have a clue what we're doing. That's we're going to mess it up because we're not glorifying, glorifying God. And we want to make sure we glorify God and, in our marriage. And I just had this thought because, you know, again, relationship, we do, we do quite a bit of premarital, postmarital counseling. Uh, with with you know couples that are in ministry so forth and so on and one of the things that we've been talking about this week is a lot of times single individuals are not ready for the monogamy that marriage demands right right this guy is making a covenant and a commitment this woman is making a covenant and a commitment they're going to be with one person not just physically and relationally and, and emotionally but sexually for the rest of their lives. Life. And and listen, you got to be ready for that. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and ladies say, every time he come around me, all he, he, he all over me. He all over me. Well, girl, guess what? Welcome to marriage. Yeah, welcome to marriage. Yeah, and so y'all got to work on that, whether you're going to use a schedule, whether you're going to be spontaneous or whatever the case may be. I mean, you walking around, my wife walk around with her fine stuff. She could have on one of those hazmat suits. I can see her fine through the suit. <laughs> Come on out the spirit, right? Woo! And she and she got to be ready. And you will too if you get married. That's right. We're here uh, satisfied in that, satisfied one another in that area, That's right? That's good. That's right. Right, That's right. right. And, and, and as you're dating, ladies, you have to remember that you're not in covenant with that person. You know, so wow. stop trying to wow. um, date like you're in covenant. God said marriage is a covenant. Yep, and yep. so dating is not a covenant. And so he can't treat you or you can't treat him like y'all, if you don't have a ring, yeah. like, like y'all married. That's it. That's it. That's it. You, you try to give somebody marriage privileges in a dating context mm -hmm. and you can, you don't, you, you don't do that. You know, and don't, don't start putting money together and all this kind of stuff, you know, before you get married, make that thing solid, yeah. get the covenant, get the commitment. You, you know what I'm saying? Do that first, but make sure you've got yourself together mm -hmm. and don't compromise for somebody no. who is. I think I saw somebody say a few minutes, you don't want a project. And no. ladies, a lot of times, it breaks my heart when I see a nice young lady, she picks up this guy and he's a project. Yeah. And she spends the rest of her life trying to put this Put that man together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You don't need a do-it-yourself project. No, you need that joke to come ready-made. Yes. Ready-made. And, 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 and also for per the woman. She can't expect something out of the man that she's not trying, putting in the work That's to. True. You can't just sit back and not um uh work on yourself right right and expect the man to come and pull you. Of course, you're gonna mm -hmm, just get mm -hmm, something. Mm -hmm. You know, you might not get what God sent you, but you're going to get something. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and and we encourage emotional maturity. Yeah. You know, you need to master your emotions, mm -hmm. male and female. You've got to master your emotions. And maybe we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Uh, again, learn and accept the responsibilities of marriage. Because responsibilities come with marriage. That's it. And so, you know, the distractions are double. You yeah. think you have distractions now as mm -hmm. an unmarried person, mm -hmm. those distractions double right. when you become married. And it's, it's good distractions. Yeah. 
you know, is great distraction. There's joy in But, man. you know, it, it can become so that you don't know how. That's when you like, um, you get those uh, married couples and married women that say, how do I balance all of this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah. we're learning how to do those things before we get married. Right, because there, there are some additional responsibilities mm -hmm. in marriage that you need to learn what they are. And then you also have got to accept them. You can't dodge these responsibilities because it's the two of you and y'all make a team. Yeah. You know, and then, and once you read this last. Determine realistically who it is you would ideally marry. What's on your list, ladies? What's on your list, male? Uh, man of God, what's on your list? Yeah. Some of these lists are too long. Some of these lists are too long. Yeah. We had to cut. Okay. And unrealistic. Very. At, yeah, at yeah, time. Yeah. God is trying to send you that person. He's sitting right there. Mm -hmm. And because his head is bald or because, you know, he doesn't look like you think on your list that he should look like. And then you, you you're. No, he's not for me. But God is sending you a king, and the king is sitting right there. You yeah, don't yeah. even see the king. And, and I think, you know, some some miss the person. that They miss the king because they're looking for a savior. Okay. Right? You're looking for somebody to come and rescue you. You're looking for somebody, you know what I'm saying, that's just going to come and and ride up in the, in the, into your job on a white stallion, and everybody's going to go, ooh, ah, and all this kind of stuff like that. You know, that that may not happen. And so, you know, you don't want to compromise. You need to have a legitimate uh, uh, set of standards. Non-negotiable. Yeah, and there's certain things that ought to be non-negotiable. Maybe we'll do that in a part two, some of the yeah. qualities that you need to look into. But, you know, see how they see how they treat their, treat their uh, parents, you know. Oh, man, The, the yes. way that a man treats his mom is a good indication of how he's going to treat you. Yes, Lord. And, and, and you know, and, and, and so forth. And so there, there are some things that you need to have a realistic list. You know, you, you want a 10, but maybe you're a four or five. Right, You right. might need to kind of drop down a few notches, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, or improve yourself. Yeah, but uh, still have your non-negotiable. You still have your non-negotiable. we are, like, running out yeah, of time. Yeah, I mean, so we're over time. We're over on y'all with these singles. Messing with these mar unmarried oh, people. unmarried. Uh, yes. but, but so we want to give you some uh, a challenge as uh, unsaved, uh, as saved, rather, yeah. and married individuals. We want to challenge you tonight. Uh, first of all, develop a solid and growing relationship with the Lord. I think that's important. Mm -hmm. That's where you're going to really discover how complete, how whole you are. And he's the only one yeah. that can restore you where you're broken. You know, he's the only one that can, can mend you and repair you and, and so forth. And then discover who you are. I mean, find out who you are. We talk to couples sometimes, and these individuals are married, but they don't know who they are individually. Yeah. They don't know what they want. They don't know what they like, independent yeah, of, yeah. of their spouse. And then know, know what it is you're supposed to do in the Lord. And believe that God will bring somebody alongside you that will compliment you and not compete with yes, you. Yes, become uh, a winning team, that's honey. It, that's it. Become a winning team. Enjoy what the Lord provides. Enjoy what the Lord provides. Some brothers can't you know, they, they'll never enjoy Leah because they're looking for Rachel. You know, you you got to enjoy what the Lord provides and then avoid seeking after what God has not ordained for you. Mm. Sometimes you keep, you know, seemingly missing out on this, that, mm. and the other because that's not who God ordained for you. You're trying to get, and God is saving you from yourself. Yeah. You think this brother, because he's tall, dark, yeah. handsome, six pack, all these other kinds of things like that. And you got to do all this work. He, look, he, this guy too hard. To, he, he's making you work too hard just to be with him now. Right. No, you need to don't go after stuff that God has not ordained for you. He in the mirror more than you in the mirror. Oh, all right, ladies. Lord, all Jesus. right. That, you, that's you know, a signal. Yeah. Yeah. You better use your discernment and stop trying to uh, just chase out of something that God did not send. Right. That's true. That's true. You, matter of fact, send it back. Make sure that this is not something that the devil has sent to you. Right. Right. To dis to disrupt you, to get you off track, get you out of God's will for your life. Those kind of things. So we look, we ran over time tonight, but we got to give you these practical tips. Yes. We're using the word value. Value. 
because every unmarried person that's on this live stream tonight on Instagram live, you have value by yourself. Yes. You don't need anybody to be added to you to be seen as valuable. And you need to know your worth. You need to, we're going to talk about, you need to know your worth. So the letter V in value, value yourself value yourself that way you won't just take anything from anybody yeah. learn your true identity learn your true purpose learn your true destiny know your value know your worth know your significance know that it all comes from the lord and you don't necessarily need somebody to tell you how awesome you are yeah. amazing you are i mean all those things are great but if they don't say it, you know they're just not seeing what yes. it is that you carry. Right, 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 yeah. right. Uh, letter A, accept your single miss season. Mm -hmm. Don't hate it. Don't yeah. run from yeah. it. Accept it. And if you desire to be married, be prepare yourself for that, but not at the expense of developing yourself during the season. Yeah. Yep. You take advantage of the season that you're in. So accept your singleness mm -hmm. season. I, I always say, you know, some men, some men act like boyfriends instead of husbands. Right. That's why they're never seen by women who have a calling to be a wife. And then you have women who behave like girlfriends and not like wives. No, yeah. you need to work. I, I shared this yesterday in the message here at the church. We were talking about fighting for the family. Men, I mean, we, we're real simple in general. We want... You know, we 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 want a, a good meal, we want a clean house, and we want good sex. Good sex. Right? That's what Amen. men, that's what married men want. Clean house, good meal, good sex, right? And so, you know, as a as a wife, you need to prepare yourself for those kinds of things. Yeah. If you can't cook, you need to take some cooking classes. Uh and, and <laughs> have one or two or three meals yeah, under your at belt. At least one or two or three meals yeah. under your belt. Yeah. Yeah. Letter L, leverage. Leverage the unmarried uh state. Leverage it. Take full advantage of this time. Become God, become who God desires for you to be. Uh become complete, become mature, grow up. You know what I'm saying? Men, get your own. Women, look for a man who has his own. Yeah. Look for a man that's got his own car his own house, his own money, his own retirement program, his own teeth, his own hair, and no, all that stuff. But look for a man <laughs> who's got his Ooh. own. Amen. Wow. Leverage this time. And, and ladies, get your own. Get, get your, your own. own. Have it's your okay own to have stuff. your own. And don't make let anybody make you guilty about having your own. It's not true that men don't, you know, oh, because I have. What's the, th what's the thing they're saying now? Because I have. Men don't, you know, men, yeah. men don't want a woman to have stuff or mm -hmm. feel like, you know, they're better than them or yeah. whatever. Yeah. You know, men want you to have some stuff. Men yeah, want you, you to be. You, 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 a man wants to find a lady who's got it together. And all, all you're going to do is run off guys who are insecure yes. when you have your own. Yes. You know, make, make him have to step up. Girl, know your worth. Know your value. Make him have to come high or stay home. Mm -hmm. You know, as they say, stay on, stay on the porch. Or if you can't run with the big dog, stay know, on the that's porch. Right. That's how you ought to be. He, you, you know, you, you don't want, again, somebody, he can just show up. The only thing he's got is uh, his birth certificate. He doesn't have any other, any kind of other credentials whatsoever. No, that's not the guy that you desire. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. The, the letter U, understand that singleness is a state, not that which defines your worth and your value. Singleness is just, a, just state. a state. It does not define you. Jesus defines who you are. Yes. The word of God defines who you are. You know, you know what I'm saying? Not the state that you're in. Yes. Us being married doesn't make us, you know, people of worth, value, and significance. Right. It's a blessing. Yeah. But we get our value and worth from Jesus Christ. Yes. And, and letter E, enjoy your singleness. That's it. Enjoy while you can, yeah. you know, because he's coming. You praying. So if you're praying 
God is going to send them, you know, don't give up. There are some uh, wonderful saved men out here. You know, I know I have a, a son at home. Mm -hmm. I'm not putting him out there for anybody to marry. Well, he's going right to be a good husband. But he's going to be a great husband for someone. And one thing that I would love to say is women and men, remember when you're dating, that's why you shouldn't give yourself over to someone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you're dating. And if he's not for you, yep. you know, um, be careful how you talk to that person. Be careful how you interact because that person is somebody's husband or mm -hmm. will be somebody's wife one day. So we need to make sure how we handle that person in your single state. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that that's so important. Enjoy your singleness. Don't let anybody belittle you, put extra burdens on you. Have yourself a good time. You follow what I'm saying? Uh, set a certain standard of living right. that you won't deviate from when somebody comes into your life. Now, man, look, y'all single people, y'all oh got more, y'all got, got more got out of us yeah, yeah, than we had intended to give. But there's so much more that we want to talk to you all about because but we really do love you, and we want you to be encouraged mm -hmm. and know that God has you on his mind and, and don't give up. As um, Veronica said, don't give up. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. He's out there. We want. So He's we're, out there. We, we're gonna pray for y'all so y'all can go do your homework. Yeah. Right. Work on yourself. <laughs> Work on yourself. Value yourself. yourself. See yourself the way that the Lord sees you. Thank y'all so much for uh, hanging out with us on Instagram. Share this. On Facebook. Look. Share this tonight. Tag some single people. This is good, really, uh, for young adults. You know. Oh yeah. Uh, even even some high school students. I mean, I wish I had somebody talk to me like this when we were in high school and. And in college or what have you, but you, we need this kind of insight right now. But we're gonna pray for you that are that are unmarried. Again, share this with somebody else. Y'all been a blessing. Thank you for all your comments, thank you, the likes, amen. Give us some I mean, love. Give us some, some love. Some of y'all been cracking up and cracking us up, and this has been a wonderful time. But let's pray, Father. We thank you so much for every person that yes. has watched tonight, whether they're thank unmarried you, or they are married. We thank just you, pray blessings upon them. Uh, we pray that the Holy Spirit encourage those individuals you, that are unmarried uh, to pursue you, to pursue you in your word, to see their completeness, to see themselves the way that you see them. Now, God, thank you for this time. May this ministry touch many lives yes, for your God. glory. Thank in you, Jesus' Lord. name, amen. amen. We love y'all. Encourage you to love well, love well until next Monday night. Now, if we get enough feedback from single and unmarried people, we may have a part two. We may two, have a part two. But we need y'all to make some noise somewhere yeah, on Facebook. Show us y'all right? really want show it. Show us that, that, that there's some more things that you all want to know, and we would love to be a blessing to you. Married couples, we haven't forgotten you all. Hang in there. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think the date is December the 14th. It's a Saturday. Uh, in December, we will have our final married couples enrichment for 2020. But we're going to get the information. Soon you'll be able to go and register online. There'll be a small registration fee, but it's going to be a time that we get away uh, with the married couples and just pour into you in a kind of an intensive way. Yeah. And uh, and we just love y'all. We, we hear y'all already, all right? <laughs> we want part two. But God bless y'all. Good night. And we'll see y'all again real soon. <laughs> Blessings. Bye now.